Today we're going to take a look. Today we're going to take a look at an Elm package called Remote Data by Chris Jenkins that really wraps up all the logic around fetching data from the server really nicely. We haven't used it so far just because I wanted to keep things straightforward when we were making HTTP requests, but now we've done a couple. I want to use remote data because if I was building this as a real project, I would reach for remote data immediately. What remote data does is wrap up all the logic and state behind making a request. You know if the request has even been made yet, if it's loading, if it's succeeded, or if it's failed. And it's a really nice package for managing all that state and information about a request. So the first thing we need to do is install it. So I'm going to grab here the package name, Chris A. Jenkins slash remote data. And let's go and dive into the editor. So as always, I'm going to do yarn elm install and pass in Chris A. Jenkins remote data. And it's going to ask me if I want to add that and we'll say yes. So once we've installed it, if we load up the Elm JSON file, you'll see that we now have Chris A. Jenkins remote data. Now, important thing to note here is that we're using version five. However, if we go back to the package uh, Elm, important thing to note here is that we're using version five. However, if we go back to the Elm package site, you'll see that the latest version is version 6.0.1. So you might be wondering why the Elm package manager has installed version five for us. It has to do with the dependencies of remote data. Remote data version 6 depends on the second version of Elm's HTTP library. However, HTTP Builder, which we've used throughout the series, at time of recording, hasn't yet been updated to work with that version of Elm's HTTP package. Therefore, the Elm install mechanism has realized that for us to use HTTP Builder and remote data side by side, it can only install remote data version 5. Whilst this, you might Whilst you might think this is a bit frustrating, and it would be ideal if we could use the latest of everything, in Elm version upgrades are less of a deal than they are in, say, the NPM JavaScript community. The Elm package system strictly manages versioning and semantic versioning, so you have to annotate and document breaking changes correctly. And that means typically that going through an upgrade of a library isn't as hard. You also have the compiler that will error, so you can upgrade a library, let the compiler error, and tell you what you need to update. So we're going to continue with remote data version 5, and if in the future it's updated so we can use the latest version, I'll include some documentation with that as part of the video package that you've downloaded. Or I'll come back and I'll record another video doing the upgrade myself. So and the version, the difference between version 5 and version 6 isn't too much either, so it's not like we're, we're missing out on a ton of features by swapping back to 5. What you need to make sure is if you're looking at the documentation, don't look at version 6.1. If you click on the name, you'll see all the published versions, and we're going to grab the latest major version 5. You'll get a warning that latest pack. You will get a warning about it not being the latest version, but this is all good for us. And you can click over here in the module docs, and we can get the data here. So now we have this, let's go and look at how we can integrate remote data into our package. So if we take a look at the type of remote data, you can see it right here. Its type has two subtypes, an error type and the actual uh, type of the data that's been loaded. And it can be a one of four states, not asked, which means we haven't even requested the data yet, loading, which means we've made a request, haven't heard back, or it failed with some associated data, or it succeeded with the data that we wanted. Remote data also includes a nice alias called web data, which is a remote data where the error type is the HTTP error type. So what we can do is annotate any data that we're fetching from an API as web data. Let's go and look at how we can integrate that into the code that fetches the feed. So 
So I'm in my types file and we're going to need to do some importing now. So we're going to import remote data and we're going to say exposing web data. So this is going to be our new type for our feed. So if we scroll down to our authentication status, now this maybe list feed post is now going to change from a maybe to be a web data. This is saying that we've got some feed posts that we're fetching from the web via an HTTP request and web data is going to store the type of that request and what state it's in. So I'll hit save there. What we're going to do is we're going to need to now go through and fix all the HTTP. What we now need to do is just go through and work our way through any compiler errors. So you can see we have a couple of compiler errors here where we fetch the authenticated user we're now setting the feed to be nothing but the error here will say that nothing isn't of the right type because nothing is a maybe but logged in needs it to be a web data. So what we need to do is tell it at this point what the state of this piece of web data is. Typically you would see this be not asked which is the remote data state for we haven't even made this request yet but actually if you look a couple of lines down this bit of code is where we kick off the request to fetch the feed. So rather than not asked, we can say it's loading. And I'm actually going to prefix that with the remote data module. And we'll go up to the top and we'll import remote data. So now there's no error there, that's right. But up here you can see where we case where we're logged in and we fetch some posts, you'll see that we're setting the you'll see that we're setting the fee to be just posts. But now what's going to happen is we're not storing the list of posts directly anymore. We're storing the web data representation of those list of posts. So fetch feed, this post will stop being a list of feed posts and will be our new instance of web data. I'm going to leave it called post, but that means that instead of just passing it through as a just, we just remove the... So because post is going to be the web data type, we don't need this just. We can just say post like that. We're going to get an error now because post is a list of feed posts, but logged in needs it to be a web data. But now we can go and find our HTTP code and update that to use the web data module. So I'm going to API feed.elm. And here we have fetch feed, which uses HTTP build. And here we have fetch feed, which uses HTTP builder to make the request. And it calls HTTP builder.send with handle feed response. Now this brings us back a result, but we need to convert that result into a remote data instance. If we look if we look at the remote data documentation you'll see we have a from result function here converts a result error probably produced from elm http to a remote data value so this is exactly what we want we need to take what the server gave us back via elm's http package which is being used by http builder then we need to wrap it in a remote data so we can go into fetch feed and we're going to do http builder.send handle feed response this is going to take the result and all we need to do now rather than doing this case statement is we're just going to say we want to call the fetched feed uh, message that's the message we want to send but we're going to call remote data dot from result from result on result so now we'll always send the fetch feed function so now we'll always send the fetch feed message and it will contain the latest version of our result so if the request succeeded and we have the data, this will be the success case with the data attached. Else if there was an error, it will be the failure state. And we will store that now in our model. And you can see it can't find this from result. Let's go up to the top of the file and just import remote data, like so. And you can see we're, and we're still getting a type error here. And that's because fetch feed is a remote data uh, HTTP error type now, which is the web data type we're using. However, and you can see we're getting an error here and this is because the fetch feed message expects to be given a list of feed posts whereas now we're giving it a web data object let's go to core types and update that so let's go into our types file and update that so we find our message type and fetch feed rather than being a list of feed posts is now going to be a web data 
where if we succeeded the value will be a list of feed posts. If we didn't want to use the web data helper that remote data provides, we could also write this like this. It would be a remote data type where the error case is HTTP.error. All this web data type alias is doing is avoiding us having to type this HTTP.error every time. And we're going to need to import that. And this web data alias has already been imported because we used it earlier to update our authentication status type. Remember, this is just the type that we're importing from remote data. And finally, just to be a bit tidier, I would actually change this function to pipeline it. I'm a big fan of Elm's pipelines, so I'd probably write this as we take the result, we pass it to remote data dot from result, and then we wrap that in the fetched feed message. Let's go into the browser and see what other compiler errors we need to fix. So now I'm in our view.elm and this is where the new errors are happening. So you can see we have view feed maybe feed is causing an error. This maybe feed value is a web data, but view feed needs the first argument to be a maybe list of feed posts. So we can go into view feed now. I'm going to update this maybe to be a web data. And again, I'm going to import that. So we'll import remote data exposing web data. Whoops. So I'm going to change this maybe feed to be, so I'm going to change the argument from maybe feed to be remote feed. And in our case statement, it's not going to be nothing or just, it's now going to be one of the states that remote data has for us. So if it's not asked, that means we haven't even made the request yet, we'll just return nothing and we'll render nothing to the user. If it's loading, then for now we're just going to render nothing as well. In the future, we might consider a spinner. If it's succeeded, so the type there is success, with the posts, so success posts, then at this point, we're going to take our HTML from here and replace it with my uh, list of J's, which is me failing to use Vim correctly. And otherwise, if it failed with some error, we're going to do, whoops. Otherwise, if it was a failure with some error attached to it, we're going to, for now, do nothing, but again, put a to-do in here, which says, show the error to the user. Okay, and we're getting errors there on all these types, that's because they're not found, so I'm going to import them and expose them. I could also import them such that I just do remote data dot, but I think doing that every time for this case statement would get a bit uh, too much, so I'm just going to expose them. So we're exposing web data, and we also need to expose the remote data type and all its constructors, because those not asked loading success and failure are the constructors of the remote data type. Okay, and now this is looking more promising. There's no errors, so let's go back to the browser. And as we can see, it's all still working. You can't see any difference here. What I'm going to do quickly is update the server so fetching the feed takes a long time. I'll artificially slow it down. And then we'll look at how we can add a quick loading spinner and take advantage of remote data knowing what state our request is in.
So just quickly off camera, I've updated the feed request so you can see now the server takes five seconds to respond. Let's go and see how we could add a loading spinner when it's in the loading state. So we now have this loading state here and rather than nothing, we're just gonna put a div and we'll have the text loading. And in reality, we would replace this with a nice spinner, but I just want to demonstrate to you how remote data is working here. So we go back now and I ref so if I refresh, you see loading, and then once this request over here completes in a couple of seconds time, it's gonna go away and you'll see the actual data. So remote data is a really good package for allowing you to manage all the various states of a request. It also means we end up it also means we end up with this really nice view feed code where you can clearly see all the states of your data. This means you can never forget to deal with a state and Elm's compiler will moan at you if you forget to deal with the state where, for example, the request failed or it's loading or you haven't asked for it. So if you're building Elm applications, I highly recommend using remote data.